everybody, I'm Danny Otto. Welcome into an all new episode of That Recap Show. Now, normally this would be the part where I'd say major spoiler alert ahead, but we are on the road to Deadpool and Wolverine. And along the road, we are rewatching all of the past X-Men and Deadpool movies. So without further ado, let's start X3. Here we go. Popping Off presents That Recap Show. to recap and rewatch X3. It's Johnny Rico. Hey. Hey. What's I, up? I feel like I had to note it twice because we both talked about how we basically had to rewatch X3 two times to get ready for this. Yeah. Yeah, that was um, a lot. Just if, so, if you have so much to watch right now, then stuff escapes the brain so easily. I know, I know. It's just, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, I forgot about that part. Oh, I forgot about that part. Oh, shit, I just, I better watch it again. Anyway, <laughs> um, and that kind of, I mean, look, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about with this movie. There's it, it, stuff that I had forgot that I actually did enjoy when I when I got the chance to rewatch it. Stuff I didn't enjoy as much, I, I remember. But um, that's kind of one of the things I did want to talk about this movie is I just felt like there was so much going on in this movie. There's, there's a lot crammed into this. Right. And I think that was one of the problems. Why, why yeah. like, after rewatching it now, like, where we, we have kind of examples of, you know, better movies that were, you know, put together better, like, had a lot of, you know, uh, plates spinning and stuff like that, and were able to kind of work with that and, and do do it a little bit better. Um yeah, there's just so much in this movie. <laughs> like, I think no matter what, I, I would have had to rewatch this kind of multiple times to kind of really, you know, think about all the parts I kind of wanted to talk about in this. But, uh, I mean, my biggest thing that I have to say right off the bat is the sass continues. I mean, that this is the, the three out of three sass for Wolverine in this. Um, and, and the biggest thing I can say is, is, is him, it, like, Wolverine's introduction to Beast. Who's the furball? Hank McCoy. Right off the gate. Wolverine's yeah. just swinging. Like, uh, <laughs> just, you, I, I feel like, you know, this is just the era of Wolverine where he's just sass, like, all the time. <laughs> I'm here for it. I like it. Uh, but yeah. He's it, supposed it, to write back at him, too, when he says, I know. Like, oh, he tries to talk down to him when he thinks that he's older than Wolverine, which is actually a really funny line. Because I've been doing this since you were a little boy. And he's like, Wolverine comes like, does he know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah it, no that's idea. really funny and dynamic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that's why I, I really enjoy, like, the, the, that's one of the things I've ha I have enjoyed about rewatching these. And because I didn't remember the level, the kind of level of sass that was kind of in these movies. <laughs> Yeah, the banter. <laughs> Until you kind of rewatch them and you're like, oh shit, you got a little sass there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing that I, I wanted just to continue the streak of, of sass for this entire trilogy, basically. <laughs> and I appreciate it. Um, we had a little less this movie than we did the past two, I feel like, um, because this was kind of, you know, had more like overall serious things happening. But, but uh, you know, sass nonetheless, and I appreciate it. But uh, Rico, before I get into too much, because like I said, overstuffed movie uh what were some of your instant reactions for x-men 3 yeah talk about a, a movie that had some really cool ideas set up for it and just kind of like missed the mark in so many ways and and really at this movie had just had, had done like just a few things a little bit a little bit better we could be talking about the the, the original x-men movies as one of like the better trilogies of all time i think uh but man this uh, they dropped the ball on quite a few different things especially like stuff like the phoenix especially but just the fact that, like you said they're juggling so many things that they, they felt like they you know like okay so that's the third one we gotta go bigger so which things if we're going bigger we gotta have as many things as we can as possible like we're juggling this cure storyline with the phoenix storyline uh and, and, and it's just a lot right and then of course you're, you're you're just you're throwing in all these different 
cameos and characters and you just kind of give them like their one little moment and then moving on to the next thing so yep. yeah it's, it's pretty cool you're, you're setting up characters that have no real like kind of follow through later on uh and, and, you, and it feels like that you, you kind of t- uh, took out a lot of the stuff that could have made their character like a lot more interesting uh but yeah they're, they're, that said like when i watched this back like i didn't hate it as much as i remember hating it as Same. It, I, mean, I don't even remember hating it as much, uh, that much as a kid like i was like again 15 when this came out um, I wasn't like hardcore into the 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 comic book movie scene as I was, you know, especially once the MCU started to happen. Um, and this is definitely like that era where like, you know, comic book movies kind of thrive for like that first couple of years when you had the, like the Spider-Man, the, the original X-Men movies and then Spider-Man 2. Uh, but then we started getting into like, where they, like you know, the, the, the Daredevils and the Punishers and, and, and even like the Ghost Riders started to come out around this time too. So it was like they were kind of like starting to throw a lot at us at the table anyway. Um, and so like, and, and also, uh, this was like the, this is like the biggest movie of all time when it came out just because of the golden gate uh, bridge sequence alone. Uh, and that's, and that's actually one of the highlights of the movie for me is actually that golden gate bridge sequence, uh, in, in general, uh, there's a few other things i really do love in this, in, in this movie as well. Kelsey Grammer's beast is awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a testament to how good his character was. They, they brought him back to voice the, in the, in the post credit scenes on the Marvels too. Like, I think he has a great beast voice. Uh, and I thought he looked incredible in the actual like practical makeup too. It kind of reminded me of like how good like they committed like those like full body makeup jobs like the like Jim Carrey's The Grinch, uh, and you just had like these great actors who were like in these like amazing makeup jobs and they just embodied the character that way. I think Kelsey Grammer did a great job with that, and I think the display of his overall powers and like that final battle sequence was really cool as well. Yeah, uh, and he looked pretty awesome as that uh, as his his former suit too. He had like this freaking like shirtless vest look and like. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's pretty tight. Uh, uh, and then, of course, the, the beginning of the movie with the, the danger room sequence, uh, I thought that to me was like very X-Men. It's probably the most like X-Men scene of a, a lot of the, the last three movies. Uh, and I just kind of like the way they just put the whole uh, the, the teamwork there. We got the fastball special, of mm-hmm. course, the Colossus and, and Wolverine. So I love that a lot. Um, and then, of course, like you, you still get the stuff with like Eric and, and Professor in the beginning of the movie. There's like the, old, the, 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 the de-aging uh, especially for that time, I thought it looked pretty good for, uh, especially on uh, uh, Patrick Stewart in general. Uh, so yeah, there's there's some pretty pretty cool stuff in there along with like the super cheesy stuff as well. Yeah, and I mean it, that's that's kind of the positive and negative of this movie. There's so much in there. Like even if you didn't like certain part, there's gonna be something else that you do enjoy. Like mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? So it's like they're just like just throw everything in there and make sure that. You know, we're going to yeah. hit every single, like, audience. Yeah, this could be our last one, so let's cram in as many mutants as we can, basically. Exactly. It's like, just so we can say we got them in there. <laughs> right. So it's, like, the best and kind of the best and the worst of it. But, yeah, just like you said, and I we didn't even plan this. I put this in also. The Magneto moving the Golden Gate Bridge over to Alcatraz. Super oh, yeah. epic. Super, cool. like, super epic scene. <laughs> Love that part. Um, I even like, you know, where, where we're getting... Uh, Kitty Pride like going through the walls and and uh juggernauts chasing her type of thing like that sequence was really cool too like yeah and all- and the use of leech uh who we've also seen more in the in the animated series let's see but the morlocks is they including the morlocks in there and kind of a, in kind of like an, an underutilized way but just kind of yeah. saying like hey we got the morlocks in there uh and, and I remember that kid that played leech like just being in a lot of movies at the time like that kid was really around a lot and I was like okay look like they got that guy to play a little mutant uh, and of course, like the way they utilize them, is, uh, that that juggernaut scene in general is just really funny. The way he yeah. just rams us up into the <laughs> into the wall. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. So so yeah, I mean, we're we're basically you know kind of gonna go back and forth and back and forth on this because there's just like there's there's so much in this that yeah, mm. there's definitely going to be you know goods and bads and like that's, that's well, yeah. what I said overall like that's what it is. But uh, before we get too far, you want to get to some big takeaways? Let's do it. Awesome. All right. I'm going to give up big takeaways just because like, like I said, we're going to go back and forth and back and forth on stuff that we, we appreciated some stuff that we didn't like as much. I love this scene and I, I, I love kind of just the, how it worked <laughs> and it is this, the scene where we get Wolverine tricking Magneto. You never learn, do you? Actually, I do. Basically attacking the same way he always makes fun of him for doing. Mm-hmm. And it's really like a, a, a trick. Like, I thought that was perfect. Like, yeah. <laughs> like Wolverine that was, was playing chess. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Like, if you bring the whole metaphor, metaphorical aspect of those characters and they're like, 
he finally is playing chess at Magneto's level. <laughs> right. I just thought that scene, like, that was a highlight for me. Like, there was a lot of, like, little parts of this movie that, I, like I said, and, and you said, uh, kind of rewatching, we enjoyed, like, little, like, things here and there, being able to see, you know, certain mutants that, you know, we, we aren't able to see again. Um, but, you know, just being able to, like, those parts. But this one for me was, like, in universe, in movie, I felt like this was a really good scene in general. Like, mm-hmm. if if this, you know, take out a bunch of, like, the cameos, take out a bunch of things, this would would have been a highlight scene no matter what in this movie type of thing. Um, so I, I just wanted to, like, note that, like, on top for, for my takeaway because I, I just, I, I loved that scene. Uh, <laughs> Rico, yeah. what, what were some of your takeaways from X3? It was super satisfying because I would say the, the whole dynamic between Magneto and, and Wolverine. I mean, we, we saw it again in the X-Men 97. There's yeah. a moment where Wolverine gets his, 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 his move on Magneto as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's always kind of cool when we get to see like him with a clear like flaw in his approach to Magneto, like kind of get the one up on him. Uh, so that was really cool. Um, but, man, th- this movie, like no one is safe in this in this movie. Absolutely. Like, like right off the bat, we lose uh, Scott, which is like, like again, Justice for, for, for Cyclops. I, I believe like the whole like behind the scenes thing is that like the, the, the actor had to go shoot Superman Returns with Brian Singer, who directed the first two movies. So it was like that whole thing. He just go, was going to jump in the ship to another movie and they had to get him out of there as soon as he could, basically. Um, but man, justice for Cyclops overall, because he just went out in such a in such a rotten way. I feel like one is death happens off screen, which kind of sucks. Like we get a tease of him dying off on screen, but then it doesn't even happen uh, in our in front of our eyes. So that's kind of a bummer uh and then of course you know we we uh you know gene first of all gene in general is just like a wild thing like first the, the approach to the phoenix is just like an insane decision to have it be like this kind of like this, this split personality that gene right. manifested is just like a weird approach because you had the cosmic entity thing kind of happening right there you teased it pretty well in, in x2 uh and then it, 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 Really, what we get when we see Gene as the Phoenix is like this feral, horny woman who's like <laughs> going after every dude that she sees, and then like kind of standing there still like the rest of the time. Uh, but I will say, like that ending scene with her and Wolverine when she finally like as like she's like and, and Wolverine finally has to like kill her at the end. Uh, I thought that was really well done. I think the music and all that is really good. I think well, uh, well, Hugh Jackman's acting again is is top notch. I think as he he just gets better and better in this role as the movies right. progress. Uh, and of course, like later on, we we get to see like his best work, uh, which is crazy. Um, and then, uh, of course, seeing her, you know, basically Thanos dust uh, a bunch of mutants, but also Charles, which is crazy because we just lose Charles midway through the movie and we just have to move on from it. Right. right. <laughs> uh, which is crazy. I like, just say like, yeah, that happens. OK, now we're moving on to the next uh, set piece, basically. Uh, so, yeah, just like, you know, giving us no room to breathe there. Uh, and then even like Mystique, Mystique is thrown away in such cold yeah. fashion by by Magneto. Like the second that she accidentally gets hit by a gear, uh, and she's and Magneto no longer sees her for like the beautiful blue woman that she was. She's like, okay, nope, you're, you're done. <laughs> I thought that was like, I thought that was really brutal. Um, but it yeah. also gave us the introductions of characters like Multiple Man and Juggernaut. So that was just like that scene gave us a lot in general. Um, but yeah, man, they they really spared nobody in this movie and and kind of gave you that feeling like okay we're kind of wrapping this like three movie trilogy up so who knows if we're going to see these characters again we'll just take out whoever we want <laughs> yeah and learn to know that we would be setting up for a lot more later on but still <laughs> yeah and and I, I mean however you feel about this movie like it does just i i absolutely agree with you it does feel like they were kind of like well this is it like yeah. <laughs> let's just do it like yeah, Rogue being relegated just wanted to get cured, and then she actually gets it at the end, which is like, oh, yeah, it, yeah, okay, okay, that's it. So okay. I, I did have one question about that. So the fact, and and I mean, this kind of leads a little bit into kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about in predictions or things we're looking for. One of the endings, because I feel like we kind of got two teases. I called them teases at the end, basically. Um, one of them is, you know, Eric kind of being able to move a metal chess piece mm-hmm. type of thing. So is this to say that, like, the cure isn't permanent, basically? Because if it's not permanent for him, it shouldn't be permanent for Mystique, and it shouldn't be permanent for Rogue, right? Could be a power level thing. Uh, or or maybe something like, uh, in, again, again, compared to X-Men 97, when Storm loses her powers... It just kind of makes them dormant and it has maybe it's something they got to find later on so we never really do get an explanation of how he actually gets his powers back because i don't think we 
we don't see this version of Magneto again until right. Days of Future Past, I want to say. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot that we like we don't get like fully explained. We just kind of accept that it happens. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, and look, as teases go, the two teases we got at the end of this movie were like, oh, shit. Like, cool. yeah. like, had there been something after this, cool. Like, that would have set up for, like, we get, basically, we get all of our players back on the field. Like, type of thing. Like, that's just basically what it was what it was saying. Because we get Charles waking up in a new body, brand new body. Um, and we get, you know, Eric showing that his powers are coming back. Like so, we basically are like, okay, the the two the the two main players are back, type of thing, which yeah. is a cool tease to kind of like have all of this. Um, just like you, I, I'm a little upset in in kind of how they dealt with the phoenix in general. Like, I I, I just they could have made that the movie, like just make that the movie, or just make yeah, you know, they tried to make two like two or three different movies in one, right? when they had their movie right there. <laughs> right. And this could have been, it still could have been like called the last stand. And we could have gotten like everyone having to team up against the Phoenix again. Type, like, you, you know what I mean? Like if this could have been like this epic ending and they find out like working together is the only way we're going to be able to conquer Phoenix. Like, you know what I mean? Like could have still had a very similar ending, mm-hmm. like where they have to work together and, and like, you know, bumps along the way and yeah i just ah, yeah anyway in retrospect <laughs> yeah. and we lost nightcrawler too which is a bummer we didn't get yeah. him. we didn't get him in this third movie i sure. know that was weird like yeah. a, a, to choose to not have him in this movie when he was so i think they wanted to good. but there's always like again those weird like schedule scheduling things or whatever happens like that and they write them out whatever like it, it was always so this, these these movies were particularly has some wild backstories behind them so <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 um but anyway do you want to i i don't know what to call this you want to get to some i'm gonna say you want to get to some predictions but uh this is kind of just like things you know moving forward that we spitballing spitball, yeah. <laughs> spitball ideas moving yeah. forward. why don't you kick us off <laughs> um yeah okay so there's the um, there's a lot to look forward to. Obviously, we got one thing already because, like I mentioned before, we got Kelsey Grammer voicing Beast right. in the MCU and in, in, in a more like kind of comic book accurate looking form of his character because it was a little bit more CGI, kind of like the Hulk. Um, so that was actually kind of a cool little Easter egg. I mean, we obviously get like the, the nod to the the, the John Amin universe or the, the Fox universe because they're they're in like the the the, the mansion basically. Um, so that's pretty cool. But one of the things from this movie that when I was watching is. I was talking about characters that are kind of introduced and then not really just kind of utilized that well at all and and, and not really give them like an actual art. And that's uh, Ben Foster as Warren Worthington III, a.k.a. Uh, Angel. Like we get like a beginning, middle and end of his story, but there's yeah. nothing that like really, there's no meat to the story at all. Like we get him as a young boy, like discovering like his wings as a- uh, Cutting as, you know, them off very, in Very, very brutal scene. Yeah, it's like oh. a really brutal scene and it, it automatically makes you feel bad for the kid. Yeah. And then of course, like the, when the idea of the, the cure is, is, is um, you know, about to come to fruition because obviously his dad's the one developing it um, and he's trying to test it on more and that, that's when we get to see him like, you know, fly out there for the first time. We get to see mm-hmm. him spread his wings. Uh, and I always, I always remember that being one of the cool shots from like the trailers when it was, when it was coming out. It was like that shot of him with the wings spanning, like it just looked really cool uh and then of course at the end when he saves his dad like we just get like that we literally just get part one part two part three with no meat in between in each yeah. of those parts so it's it's pretty wild like, it feels like there was more there that we could have explored uh we do get to see the character explored a little bit more later on in apocalypse uh and he also the uh, the, the archangel version uh which i think is really cool uh but i really would have liked to have seen ben foster do more with this character because one ben foster is an incredible actor uh he's gone to do some um really great work Alpha Dog is a movie that I remember seeing him in where he's just like really just like batshit insane. Uh, Hell or High Water is a great movie that he was re- uh, really great in uh, with Chris Pine. Um, but really getting to see what him with his acting abilities would have been able to do, especially uh, like the Archangel where he's got like the blade wings and stuff like that. He's got like a little bit more of a sinister take on the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, would have been really interesting to see and it would be, it'd be a really cool like uh, cameo in I think Deadpool and Wolverine too if he's out there somewhere in the void like this Ooh. and it's actually turned into archangel in some form but yeah i want i want to see ben foster like take up a, like a cool role like that i think he's an actor that can be well utilized in this kind of a world yeah i i totally agree with you um i mean i remember i it's hard to remember when i was actually you know watching this movie for the first time but i can absolutely say just because i know you know how i kind of got into 
comic books and comic book movies kind of going backwards, like I've always said, where it's like more I've, I got drawn in from the movies and from like the cartoons and stuff like that. And then was like, oh, shit, there are comic mm-hmm. books about that, like type of thing. So I know I didn't know too much about this. So I'm probably part of the audience that was going, I don't know who all of these mutants are. Like, I, I know oh, my yeah. Wolverine, I know Jean, I know Storm. Like, I was probably at that level, but I was definitely not at the level of, like, knowing Angel and knowing, like, now I do, like, f- further down the line and, and stuff like that. I know a little bit more, but, but yeah, it, it's, it kind of did a disservice to that particular character because this could have been the introduction for a character to a, a, a much broader audience. Yeah, a pretty major think. character too, because I think he's a part of the original lineup of X-Men too. So yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, there he is. He's just thrown in there, but like, come on, give him more to do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, If we're talking about kind of like Void and, and, and stuff that we'd like to kind of technically see in Deadpool Wolverine-ish, uh, like that kind of, there's two things. One I thought of as you were kind of bringing up uh, how we got, uh, you know, Kelsey Grammer, reprising his role as beast basically like i know it was mostly cgi so it was mostly yeah, more voice. voice acting than than actually being there but something's got to happen there if they're technically you know if that post credit scene is technically taking place in the fox marvel universe or whatever universe number that they're going to call it hopefully something we get a little nod to that or we get a shot of that of deadpool maybe rescuing monica rambo like because she's a character from the MCU. Like, we can't just leave her there and then Deadpool and Wolverine be all about, you know, the Fox Marvel universe going away forever type of thing. Right. Like, that that effectively is killing her off screen. And I, I really, <laughs> I don't want that at all <laughs> for, for any MCU characters that we've had. I, even if we, you know, don't get more and more projects with Monica Rambeau, which I hope we do because I, I do think she's an interesting character. Um, but... I, I I just hope we get like something like a little nod to that. Like we were like, maybe if, if Deadpool's at the TVA, the TVA can say something to the effect of, well, we brought, you know, Monica back over. So we know it's possible to yeah, go. Between. We're monitoring her. Yeah, so, yeah. Something like that would be a cool, just, just nod to that. That's the first one. That's the one I just thought of when you were kind of bringing up that scene and, and stuff like that. The other one is Pyro. Is not one of my favorite characters? But I oh, feel yeah, like in, big. in this movie, yeah, they, in this movie in particular, they really like bring up the, he's a dick character. Like, I feel like they just amplified that. Like, I know he wasn't like a nice guy all the time. He was kind of a dick, but like, this is just full blown. He even has to, he gets put in his place by Magneto. Would have killed the professor if he'd given me the chance. Charles Xavier did more for mutants than he'll ever know. For talking shit about Charles after Charles had just died, type mm-hmm. of thing. Like, well, yeah, you know what I mean. So, like, he's absolutely a dick in this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what I really, what I think would be interesting to see, because obviously we don't know, we know for sure we're getting Pyro, but we don't know, you know, what Pyro, I guess, because you know we're dealing with multiverse, we're dealing with a whole bunch of things. So, we could potentially be getting the Pyro from Last Stand. Um, but in, in any case, I would like to see like maybe like just a slightly more humbled pyro for being in the in the void or being ever wherever he is type of thing to really like. Like I said, he's not one of my favorite characters, but I don't want to hate him as a character. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? And when you portray him as that far as a dick you instantly are made to kind of pretty much be like, oh, well, he's just a dick. So yeah, he, he's going to lose. So, you, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of just want them him to be a little bit more toned down from that. Hmm. Um, I think he's going to be unhinged. You think so? <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to be unhinged. <laughs> oh, okay. So you yeah. want the opposite. You want, oh, yeah. You want full I think he's going to go full on. Yeah, pyromaniac. <laughs> I, mean, I, think I want the pyromaniac. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, mean, I think that's, that's what we're kind of seeing. Like he was just like embracing the fact that he was not on like the good guy side. I think that's what it was. And then like every now and then, uh, Magneto had definitely had to be like, like there's like a mutual respect there still. Like, so chill down there, little kid. Like that is those that kind of that kind of a thing. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like even he Magneto, dog had on a leash. Like, yeah. Even Magneto had been like, shut the fuck up. Like yeah. But even know? then, he was still like, okay, you can go play now. Like he was trying to treat him like the dog. Like, he's like okay, you want to go there play with the dogs? 
Okay, now you can go do your thing, and then of course he gets his ass kicked right away. Oh yeah, he absolutely gets his <laughs> yeah, ass kicked because Iceman goes full ice. Like yeah, that's a great line too. Like you're, you think you're still in school, like you never should have left. But <laughs> 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 like, that's very comic book. <laughs> there are yeah, I mean there are yeah. good parts of this movie. Like like enjoy like I don't know, good, but there are enjoyable parts of this movie. <laughs> hey, there's there's good parts in it for sure. Oh yeah, I already said like like the the whole Wolverine you know playing chess scene is definitely good. Uh, yeah, there's 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 a lot to like about this movie. Now, mm-hmm. is it is it the best? No, but it it's definitely not the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty down there as far as the X Men movies go, but it's not like the worst experience you ever have. Exactly. Yeah, but as we always say, that's what we think. Let us know in the comments below. Where do you rank X3? Uh, have you watched it recently? Where does it like hold? Does it still hold up for you? Uh, what changes would you have made to that to kind of, you know, in your mind to kind of make it more enjoyable? And as always, don't forget, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to hear about all of our latest audio and video podcast releases. Bye, everybody! Popping Off presents That Recap Show.